Let's check out this $50-ish double DIN 6.2 inch touchscreen head unit with Android Auto. How well can this super cheap head unit work with Android Auto? Yes, it's wired and not wireless, but that's what we can expect for this price point. I'm just planning to use this on my 20-year-old pickup truck. I don't want to spend more than the actual vehicle is worth. $50-ish sounds good to me if it does what it says reasonably well. What made me choose this model other than the cheap price and not any of the other dozens of similarly priced units was the large buttons and volume knob. For me, being able to control my music consistently and easily was a priority. Having physical buttons and knobs make it that much easier to use. This one has large navigation buttons for next and previous and a nice size volume knob too. There's no branding to this unit. The identification marks says its manufacturer is Shenzhen Shuzhengda Trading. Also says A2811 for possibly the part number. Inside the box we have the wire harness, the handheld remote, steering wheel remote, external microphone, it looks like it takes two triple A's for the remote. Here's the instruction manual. The unit itself feels pretty solid, but it weighs less than a pound. There goes 7622C for the identification marks. The buttons feel pretty cheap, but that's what you expect as long as they work. Here's the input output. Nice that they have a sticker on the bottom to show you what it does in case you lose the manual. Let's test out the most important function I bought this for, the wired Android Auto. Connecting through the USB port, it brings up Android Auto on my phone and it connects with no problem. Now I'm going to shut off the system by disconnecting the accessories wire with this switch. The unit is still receiving 12 volt constant with my setup. It reboots and connects fine, which is a good sign. The reason why I do this test is because some of these cheaper units have problems when you turn it off and turn it back on. It just goes back to the home screen or it doesn't put you back to where you left off. This creates an extra burden on the user to keep putting it back into Android Auto or whatever state it was you left it at. Unfortunately, another time I restarted it, it didn't go back to Android Auto. Instead, it tried to run a mirror app from the phone and the head unit fell back to the FM radio instead of going to Android Auto where I left it at. Seems to be very inconsistent with this restart. But since this is wired Android Auto, I would be unplugging my phone and plugging my phone back in when I get back into the car anyway. So although it's disappointing, it's not that big of a deal. It seems that plugging it in while the unit is on works fine. It's just the restart with the phone plugged in is a bit of an issue. I'd like to note that although this unit has a front and rear USB port, only the front will take Android Auto. If you plug it into the rear, nothing happens. Another thing to note is that if you simply install this unit and plug in your Android Auto, the physical buttons don't work other than the volume control. That's because it needs to be paired to your phone as a media controller also. So you need to pair it to the head unit through Bluetooth for these buttons to work. The odd thing is if you press the previous button, it tries to bring up the microphone voice control, but it brings up this graphical anomaly along with the voice control prompt. Let's take a look at what happens if we add a wireless to wired Android Auto adapter. First I'm going to pair it up to the phone by just plugging it into a power supply. You can see Android Auto is running on the phone but is not going anywhere because it's not connected to a display. Now we're going to connect it to the head unit and the phone will recognize it and activate Android Auto. Now it syncs to the display. You have to give it some time for it to recognize each other and now has wireless Android Auto. And the quirky thing is the buttons now work properly. Next and previous skips the songs properly instead of the previous bringing up the microphone voice command prompt. And there's no graphical anomalies that pop up like it did when it was wired Android Auto directly to the phone. Now let's test how it reacts when we shut off the car and restart it. Will it reconnect Android Auto or will it fall back to the FM radio like it did when it was wired Android Auto?
as we can see, it reconnects properly. It activates Android Auto automatically. And I've tried this several times and it hasn't failed yet. So for some reason, connecting this wireless adapter to the head unit directly does not confuse the head unit into trying to activate the other Android mirror feature that nobody really uses. Next, let's take a look at the base music player if you were not to use the Android Auto function. It can take your USB memory from the rear or the front or it can also take a micro SD card in the SD card slot on the top corner. The music player is very straightforward. You can repeat a single song, the entire folder, or the whole drive with all the folders. You can also shuffle the entire folder, just the folder, or the entire library of all the folders. The screen displays the album art the song title, and the artist information. You can choose which folder to play directly by using the back button and navigating through the folder structure from your memory card. Unfortunately, you have to go into the folder and click on the song to start playing. There's no direct play this folder button. You can also access your songs directly without going into each folder. Click this list function here and it will list all the songs available on the drive. You can scroll through and find which song you want. Or you can use the direct song number access using this function here. If you happen to know the song number on the drive, you can press the song number and hit enter. It will go directly to that song. The player not only plays music, it can also access your photos and videos too. Click on the sidebar for photos and you can find your photo folder it will filter out everything else and show you only supported picture formats. You can also go down to the video and it will list the videos on your source drive. As for other inputs, it has an auxiliary input for a 3.5 millimeter jack. It just shows the blue screen while you play your music through this source. For the Bluetooth music input, it's very basic. You get your song information, previous and next buttons, play, pause, song selection, and everything else you'll have to do on your phone. For the FM radio, you get three sets of presets. I don't know why you would need that many presets unless you have like three different drivers and they all have six presets that they want to save. But it's there and it has a search and save function. It saves the six stations that it finds. It also has a manual search, mono stereo switch, local distant station switch, and you can manually tune it with the manual search buttons. Unfortunately, there's no AM radio here. Overall, for about $50, I'm very satisfied with how this head unit functions. I like the user interface with its large icons, easy to navigate menu system, the volume knob works well, and also the big buttons make it easy to use while I'm driving. The little quirks with the wired Android Auto I can live with, and I might just keep the wireless adapter on there so that it's uh, more convenient to use. Prices are coming down on these types of units every day. I can probably buy a true wireless Android Auto unit now for $70 or less. But I like the functionality of this one, the way everything works, which is why I'm sticking with this one instead of returning it and buying a newer one.